In the examples we have covered so far, I implemented the rendering logic by using the jQuery HTML method. This works fine for simple cases, but can get ugly if the view has a lot of details. What if our view looked like this Twitter feed? In such cases, we have a lot of DOM elements with various IDs and classes, and putting all that markup inside the render function is not a clean and elegant way. We can use templates to resolve this issue. Underscore has a simple templating solution, which we can use in our backbone views. There are other templating solutions out there like mustache.js and handlebars.js. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to Underscore's templating solution. So here we've got a simple model and a view as you have seen in the earlier examples. Nothing fancy here. Our view simply renders the title of a song along with a button to listen to it. Now let's see how we can use a template to define the markup outside this render function. First, we go to our index.html and create the template. We define the template using a script element with the type set to text slash HTML. We also need to give our template an ID. It's a good convention to end the ID with the word template. Note this syntax here. This is for rendering values dynamically. Whatever we place between these angle brackets will be evaluated at runtime and inserted into the markup as a string. In this case, this is to render the title of a song. Now let's go to our main.js and modify the render method. Let me explain what's happening here. First, we use jQuery selectors to get the script element that contains the template. We use the HTML method to get the template markup. Then we pass this HTML to underscore's template method, which compiles the markup into a template. This template is a function that we can call and supply data to it. So in the second line, we call the template function and pass a JSON representation of our song model. Note that underscore doesn't know about backbone models and expects a JSON when evaluating a template. That's the reason we need to convert our model into a JSON object. Underscore's template function then returns an HTML markup, which we pass to the HTML function of jQuery here. Okay, let's try this in Chrome. Cool. So with templates, we can define any complex markup and this does not affect our views. Plus, it provides better separation of concerns. Now, let's take this to the next level. Let's say we want to display a tag called popular if the song has been played more than a thousand times. To do this, we need to add a conditional statement in our template. Note the difference between the syntax for conditional statements and the one we use for rendering the title. If we use an equal sign, anything between the angle brackets will be rendered on the page. Without an equal sign, the code will be evaluated and we can use this to implement logics. Okay, now let's set the number of plays when instantiating our model. So with 10 plays, we shouldn't see the popular tag. Let's verify this. 
nothing is here. Now we can change the number of plays to 1100. There you go. So we can use templates to render more complex markups. Underscore has templating support out of the box, which we can use by calling the template method. The template method gets the markup and compiles it into a template function. We call this function and pass the data to get the final result. Templates should be wrapped with a script element with the type text slash HTML. We should give our script elements an ID to look them up during rendering. Thank you for watching.